three, how is everybody getting on? Um, I've seen quite a few things from day one. I haven't seen anything from day two. Um, so that'll be interesting. I think day three is definitely going to attract. So today, uh, more of the business owner type stuff, because I know that lots of people are like, well, I don't want to do reels unless, um, you know, it's going to give me some decent ROI. Like, what's it going to do for my business? Right. So um, I get that. So today should be quite interesting for you. And then tomorrow we're going to wrap everything up with the other major issue that I know that most people struggle with, which is that whole thing around turning your macro content and, and shrinking it down into a micro content. So we're going to cover up my strategy around that. And that's going to help you in, in a number of ways for lots and lots of things. So um, we're going to wrap everything up tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little thing about what I've been doing this week. And you won't, you'll know it when you see it, when I explain it to you. Um, but I've been doing my content very specifically around this week so that tomorrow I can tell you why I've done it the way that I've done it and hopefully you know it's a great example for you guys on how to do the things that you need to do if you're struggling around content right so um oh hey Jess oh cool you've had a cancellation awesome we're watching replay no worries that's cool mostly next week yeah that's cool and that's fine like it's not um even if it disappears from the Facebook group um, all of the replays go up on YouTube. So depending on where you're watching this, you might be watching this on replay on YouTube already. Um, it, it's always around. So that's fine. It's not a problem. And what I tend to do is I usually put it in the hub. So with your toolkits, um, you'll see some of the replays in there. So there's various ways in which you can catch up. And I get that, you know, for anyone in the UK, we're still in lockdown. So we're still kind of homeschooling and there's bits and pieces going on. So I get that lots of people are going to want to catch up with this. And that's absolutely cool. Um, so let's dive in. So I want to keep these kind of follow on ones relatively short and sweet and just get you straight into the point. So when it comes to, you know, the whole CTA or lead generation, um, it's probably one of the most frequent questions I get asked next to kind of the hashtag question that I always get asked. Um, and people are always like, how do I, you know, I'm not getting any leads from Instagram. I'm not, you know, I'm not generating any traffic. Um, I'm not generating engagement or any of those kinds of things, right? So the first thing I want to talk to you about CTA, and if you don't know what CTA is, uh, call to action, it's the abbreviation of that, um, is call to action doesn't always have to involve money. So people think that when you talk about call to action, it's all around like generating income. And obviously that's that's the be all and end all of why we create content in the at the end of the funnel. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't always have to respond, like be around that. So it doesn't have to be like, go buy my shit or go download this or, you know, um, sign up for that or, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be all of those things. It can be questions like, can you relate to this? Comment below if. Does this make sense to you? What's your opinion of? Like, Calls to action are a really great way of educating your audience into a buying mind frame. So the more that you ask of them, and even if this is just, have you watched my new YouTube episode yet? Have you, um, like, have you checked out my new podcast episode? Comment below if, like, what's your opinion? What's your star sign? If I gave you three things, which three, like, you know, if I gave you coffee, toast, and cheese, which one would you keep and which two would you throw away? Like give them things to answer then when you do actually have something for sale and you ask for it that's the important thing right you have to ask for it they'll generally do that okay if it's of interest to them and it's at right time for them and the product is right for them and all those kinds of things that you still need to take into account but if you have been in that pattern of asking your audience repetitively for things. And like I say, these can be free things. They don't have to have anything to do with kind of lead gen, but they can be heavily engagement based, which helps build that no like trust factor, which is what we need. Um, that when you do have something for sale and it's relevant, and then you know, there's a much prob higher probability that they will do it. Now, how can you do that with reels, right? Um, and it's the same, like ultimately it's the same. So yesterday, I did another video around hashtags, something slightly different. I was showing you a hashtag tool that I really love and I've used for a couple of years now. Um, and so I gave them value in the reels. 
So I showed them my talk, my my toolkit, my little tech thing that I use. Um, but in the caption, I gave them a CTA of an option that if they didn't want to do that and they didn't want to do the research, I've actually got a done for you bundle that you can grab. So my CTA actually existed in the caption itself. And I can see from my sales yesterday that I had a peak in sales um, from that. So it's a really simple. I gave them value in the reels. And um, the call to action was in the caption itself. Now, that's one way of doing it. You can give value in reels and there's no direct CTA in there and the CTA exists in captions. And don't forget, you have two different ways of doing this. But if I was to flip that on its head and be like, okay, Sam, how would you have done that if you was going to do it in a reel? Well, what I possibly would have done, and I will happily do it for you if you want an example of it, um, what I possibly would have done is I would have maybe done one of those reels. And all right, I know we're not really game on the whole pointing thing, but I'd have done it in my own quirky way. But I'd have kind of raised the pain points of like, are you fed up with going down the hashtag rabbit hole? You don't really know what you're doing and you just want something quick and simple on how to get great hashtags. Like you want to done for you, bundle up, bundle up, that's going to work. But like, I would pick out some of those pain points and I'd probably pop those up on the screen using text. And then at the bottom of the CTAs, well, I've got a done for you bundle and it's in my link in bio. And I'd have put that in the reels itself and then followed up and backed it up with a caption that does the same thing. And maybe just a little bit more in depth, right? Because my bundle is, I think we've got 25, 26, 27 different categories in there now. There's loads of categories and a couple of people have asked us a couple of new ones. So I'm going to review it today and add some in there. Um, and I maybe would have, you know, added some of the categories in there so that people know what exists inside of it. So that was how I would do it if it was to do it on the alter alternative way. Um, so reels can be used just like you would do any other post. OK, I think for most people, because they struggle with call to action generally, um, that they can't quite get their head around how to do it inside of a reel or with a reel. Um, but quite honestly, there's a lot of CTA in a lot of my stuff. So, um, you know, recently, obviously, I've been driving traffic to the reels challenge. Uh, sometimes it's live. Sometimes I can just grab everything in the replay inside the hub. And that's cool. So every time I stick a reel on and something that is potentially um, educational or value based at the bottom of it, it would be like, P.S. If you need some help with reels, go in my lab, like click the link in my bio and I've got a challenge there for you. So it's quite easy to throw these things in. And even if you feel like, you know, I used to feel like um, every time I did some sort of CTA, I would expect this floodgates of, you know, <laughs> leads going to my stuff. And certainly that kind of happens when I drop something new, but when something has some age to it and it's just, I'm just doing it to continually bring, um, you know, leads in via that thing, that doesn't always happen. And that's okay. But when you look at it across the board, like, you know, it, it can add up to quite a substantial number. And a really good um, example of this is yesterday I had a little peek into just how many of my hashtag bundles that I've sold. And actually, it equates to nearly £3,000. Now, considering I only charge £9 for it, that's a lot of people. And that's just, I never sell it directly. Yesterday was the first example that I have that done that. Normally, this just exists on tripwire behind things that people opt in, right? So sometimes just having stuff there that's a call to action that just kind of appears in their timeline anyway can really generate income. It can generate leads. It can generate momentum. And even if that momentum is trickle, over time, a trickle turns into quite a large quantity. So my my homework for you today is, is choose which way around you want to do that. You know, what's your priority right now? This is one of the things you need to really fo like focus on too. What's your priority? Where do you want your traffic to go right now? And focus your CTA on that particular zone. Do you just want more engagement? If so, focus on those engagement um, type comments, um, you know, drop a link or 
drop your comments or have you ever done this or can you relate to that? If that's your main priority, then go with those kinds of CTAs. If you're driving traffic and you want more leads, then drive it there. If you want more people at your YouTube channel, drive it there. Like really focus your, your time and energy on the stuff that you want because over time it really, really does catch up. So focus what you want. What kind of, you know, what kind of one do you want to do? Do you want to do what I did yesterday and do a value based reel that's in line with the thing that's your focus and drop your CTA in the caption? Or do you want to be a little bit more ballsy about it? And do you actually want to kind of pick out some of those pain points that your CTA solves, whatever that might be? Um, put those in a reel and have a really clear call to action in there. Because I honestly trust you, like there is so many people that jump from my reels like my um if i look on my insights my um the one that's got the most dramatic increase is website clicks because i've been doing lots and lots of cta this week okay so just really think about that that's your homework it doesn't matter which way around you do it but be brave enough to actually kind of do this stuff because you know doing it two three times a week two three four times a week however many times a week you want to do it uh, depending on how many times you post um it can make the world of difference it really really can let me see what's going on morning joanne it definitely does work over a long run like it definitely does and it's good practice for you and it's good practice for your audience as well you know i for a long time i i just put lots of content out this is years ago but um, I used to put lots of content out that had no CTA in it. I would not even from an engagement point of view, not a sales point of view, nothing. Right. So um, when it came to me trying to sell my stuff, I found it really hard because I'd educated my audience that I wasn't going to sell to them, that I was just this continual free hub of information and that I was never actually going to ask them to exchange any time or energy with me or money with me. So I had to go through a process of re-educating my audience that I was going to sell to them. And that, that's okay, you're a business, that's what you're here to do. That's that's how you keep your business running, right? Um, so it's good for both of you. It's good practice for you as a business owner to kind of keep doing these things because the more you desensitize yourself to the whole selling aspect, the more that you'll do it and the more comfortable you'll feel with it. Um, but also, like I say, it's really, really good for your audience as well. So that's your homework for today. Reels are no different from any other kind of content. It's really all about asking for that thing that you that, that action that you want them to do regardless of what that action might actually look like um and like i say you can either do it in just the caption or you can do it in the reel itself and the caption it doesn't really matter it just depends on how comfortable you feel um and tomorrow like i say we are going to do like a little mini masterclass. i'm just going to talk you through my strategy how i turn macro content into micro content and yes this is going to work for reels it's going to work for your youtube channel your email list your content all of those kinds of things right so and I know it's an issue for most of the people over in my membership. They really struggle with that whole, well, I've got this big idea, but how do I turn it into a small reel? Like, so we're going to we're gonna cover that tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, replay viewers, as usual, you know, stick me your comments in below. YouTube people, put your comments wherever you need to put them down below. Um, if you need the toolkit, the link for that will be around in the comments, whatever. Um, yeah, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time. I'll see you later. Bye.